Let's talk now about use async data. Within our page, components and plugins can use use async data to get access to data that resolve asynchronously. And we have a definition about the difference between use fetch and use async data. Use fetch receives the URL and gets that data, whereas use async data might have more complex logic. Use fetch URL is equivalent to use async URL fetch URL. It's developer experience sugar for most common use case. And down there, we've got an example of actually this use async data, which actually is fetching uh, an endpoint with a counter uh, there example and this use async with this, this time a key and not a URL and a function which calls actually dollar fetch and it returns a promise and it's using the callback that you will put in it. So there we've got this fetch which is there and we've got this use async data. So the best thing is to put an example. In my endpoint, I'm going to create a new function which actually will wait for a promise on a product count. So we've got a product count value up there. And after two milliseconds or so two seconds, we are going to actually increment this product count. And finally, we are going to return this product count. So when we are going to call this slash API slash product, we will wait for 2000 milliseconds. So we will need on the uh, index.view to wait for that call. So it would be asynchronous. And finally, we will return our product count. So back in my index.view, what I will need to do is to use async data on a key, which could be product. And there, what we will need to do is to open this function. And this is our callback. We will have the answer of this fetch. And this is this fetch that is going to make the call. And remember, this promise will be returned and then we will get the data and we will have our pending there. So I'm going to get back, I'm going to update. And what we see is that there we go, we've got our product count, but there was no pending. Now I know that my server is running and that there is this, uh, actually every time I fetch this incremental uh, function, what I can do is here using a function to refresh my call. So what I'm going to do actually is to declare in my template a button and this button will trigger a function that will be called refresh. And this refresh function will use another function provided by Nux, which is refresh Nux data. And here, this is where I'm going to use the key of my function. So I got products, which is there. So I get back and when I click, we see that I got finally my loading because it's already uh, rendered. And every time I refresh, it's incrementing my product count. Okay, so now I'm going to use actually use lazy uh, async data and it's the same uh, thing as um, use, uh, um, use lazy fetch, sorry. If instead of having an incremental function, we would have a set interval that would be actually um, triggered every second. Now, what I, what I have is this use lazy async. However, I don't have any asynchronous uh, actions there. So what I can be back is on use async data. And when I get back and I click on refresh, we see that it's been 33. Actually, I said product count, but it's actually seconds. I got 36 seconds, 42 seconds that my server has been running because it's already turning there and we've got this product count incremental every second. We saw that Nux3 is providing to us several methods to fetch data. The first method is useFetch and actually useFetch, which is a composable, help us to fetch data universally. So on front side and on the back end side. And we can fetch that from any URL. And actually useFetch is a combination between asynchronous call, which is can be used with the composable use async data, and dollar fetch, which is coming from the method ofetch from the library and the organization of NGS. We also saw that we got many other options that we can pass 
on our fetching composables provided by Nuxt, and this function can help us to watch some elements, to refresh or to put some headers, some keys, method, queries, and params. Also, Nuxt3 is working with cache, and we've got a function called clear Nux data that help us to clear the cache data that we fetch because when we use with async data the key, we get some cache that can implies some data that will be not fresh. To refresh the data, you can use the clear Nux data function. The common problem is to pass the client headers to your API. And there is a method uh, provided by Nux, which is use request header. And we see here that we can pass directly the headers on use fetch.